In 1976, a production crew filming The Six Million Dollar Man find a corpse being used as a prop in a funhouse exhibition called The Laugh in the Dark at the Pike Amusement Park in Long Beach, California. Rather grimly, the corpse was discovered when the crew member attempted to move what he thought was a mannequin, in doing so pulling off one of the arms revealing bone and flesh. But how did we get here? Let's start at the beginning, for this corpse's rather odd journey. Unconventionally, our story starts with an end. Well, more to the point, the end of a life. Elmer McCurdy's life. With the long and colourful CV, including soldier, plumber, miner, and of course, bank and train robber, his final moments were met by a police bullet to the chest in October 1911. Following Elmer's death, his body was taken to the Johnson Funeral Home in Pawhuska, Oklahoma, where he lay unclaimed. The funeral homeowner, Joseph L. Johnson, preserved the body with a large amount of embalming fluid laced with arsenic, which was the norm for at the time for bodies that needed to be preserved for a long time. Now, if you don't like grim images, please look away now. Effectively, Elmer's body became mummified. Johnson, who was very proud of his handiwork, placed Elmer's body on display in his funeral home and charged people to see it, with the payment rather horribly being put in the corpse's open mouth. Apparently, Johnson's children even put Elmer's body on roller skates and used it to scare younger children in a horrible prank. It's just a prank, bro. Johnson received multiple offers to sell the corpse, but he refused. On the 6th of October 1916, two men claiming to be Elmer's long-lost brothers collected the body and claimed they would ship the body back to San Francisco for a proper burial. Rather predictably, the two men who went under the aliases of Ava and Wayne were actually James and Charles Patterson. James was the owner of the Great Patterson's Carnival shows, a travelling carnival. Elmer featured as the bandit who would never be captured alive until Patterson sold the operation in 1922 to Louis Sonny. Next up on the gruesome career of Elmer's corpse was Sonny's Travelling Museum of Crime, where it featured next to waxworks of famous outlaws such as Bill Doolin and Jesse James. In 1933, Elmer's body was acquired by the filmmaker Dwayne Esper to promote his film Narcotic. Dwayne placed the body in the lobby of theatres claiming that Elmer had died in a shootout at a pharmacy in an attempt to quell a drug addiction. The body by this time had deteriorated quite badly as the skin had shriveled up causing the body to shrink. Esper claimed that this was proof of Elmer's addiction. After the death of Louis Sonny, the corpse was put in storage in LA. Dan, Sonny's son, lent the body to another filmmaker in 1964, where the body had a cameo in the 1967 film She Freak. Eventually, in 1968, Dan sold the body with the rest of the waxworks to Spoonie Singh, the owner of the Hollywood Waxwork Museum, for a grand sum of $10,000. The transaction was on behalf for a show at Mount Rushmore. The corpse sustained damage during a windstorm and Elmer's ears, fingers and toes were blown off. Once the body was returned to Singh, the decision was taken not to display the body as it had taken a rather gruesome look. It was then that the body was sold to the Pike Amusement Zone, where it was eventually discovered in 1976. It took a while for the body to be identified, as by this time everyone had forgotten about old Elmer. Forensic pathologists worked to find who the corpse was. After an autopsy, it was discovered that the body had an old coin in its mouth and ticket stubs in its pocket, as well as finding the cause of death to be a gunshot wound to the chest. The body was eventually buried in Oklahoma's Summit View Cemetery, where two feet of concrete was poured over the coffin to prevent further theft. Elmer's short life was surpassed by his corpse's grim and varied journey, and rather ironically, the reason why we talk about him today is because he was dead, rather than what he did in his life. Money is considered by some as the cause of all evil. This story unfortunately gives credence to this theory. 